Many teens and young adults put their life at risk by experimenting with pills, and a lot of those pills were prescribed to someone else. Parents can help their kids avoid these unsafe behaviors, and I'm going to offer some tips. I'm Dr. Nicholas Chatty. I'm a pediatrician specialized in adolescent and addiction medicine. I'm an author of the American Academy of Pediatrics clinical report on non-medical use of controlled medications. There are many examples of non-medical use of prescription medications. A parent distributing leftovers from their own medications to a child, uh, a friend sharing or selling medications to another friend at school, uh, a, a drug distributor uh, selling what is thought to be a prescription medication, which is actually a counterfeit pill. Non-medical use of controlled medications is a risk factor for substance use and substance use disorders. So if we want to try to prevent substance use, we also want to try to prevent non-medical use of controlled or prescription medications. Here are some tips, things that parents can do to prevent non-medical use of controlled medications among teens and young adults. A first tip would be safeguarding or safekeeping medications that are currently being used or leftover medications somewhere where kids or teens can't access them. This could be by using a lockbox or a specific place in the home where there's a lock and, and young people don't have access to it. If you don't have a lockbox, this could be a toolbox or a tackle box with a padlock or a lock on it. Something that would keep the medication safe. Another tip would be for parents to be present when young people are taking prescribed control medication. It could be by giving the medication to a teen or young adult themselves or simply making sure that the medication is taken as prescribed. If there are leftover medications in the home, Parents can bring them back to the pharmacy, a healthcare provider, or the police station so that they're disposed of in a safe way. Parents should have conversations with their teens or young adults about the risks of sharing or distributing prescribed medication to people at school or around them. This means that young people should be made aware of the risks of non-medical use of controlled medications, and parents should have open conversations at home about it. One thing to know is that in some cases, a single pill can be lethal. That's often due to the fact that controlled medications can be laced with other substances, substances that we don't necessarily suspect are present and can be very strong and very risky. Even pills that look very much like prescribed psychostimulants can be laced with very potent synthetic opioids or sedatives like benzodiazepines or fentanyl. A single pill can be lethal. We know that naloxone can save lives by reversing an overdose linked with opioids. So when a pediatrician is prescribing opioids, or when we know that a young person may be misusing uh, prescription or controlled medications, a good conversation to have is about how to use naloxone and when to use it. Naloxone can be accessed in pharmacies everywhere across the country. Having open conversations in a non-judgmental way in the home about non-medical use of controlled medications and showing support about mental health and difficulties overall can act as major protective factors to prevent non-medical use of controlled medications. If young people feel like they're listened to, they will be less inclined to go towards these behaviors, which may be very risky in the long run.